dimensional shifting, and it is based on my book, Ka'aba, The Great Pyramid is the Tree of Life, or Ka'aba. Uh, as mentioned, I am co-founder of the Academy of Kinetic Education and Wellness, where I teach an African-centered model for psychological and spiritual character development, underpinned by our kinetic science, underpinned by the writings of the Puritan Guru, the pyramid texts, and the Medjur Nature. And there are, uh, we are a mystery school, and I have been coming before you over the years uh, teaching about this comedic science, uh, not only here and other conferences, but in our academy. And we have been graduating class after class of initiates uh, in these uh, most profound uh, studies. And some of our students are here today, so we're really blessed in that way. Now, uh, I have been coming, as I said before you, over the years, for many years now, talking about my books and teaching about these books that have been authored about our comedic science, Ka'aba, Building the Lighted Temple with Metaphysical Keys to the Tree of Life, uh, Secrets of Race and Consciousness, The Golden Sun, Egg Uncracked, the, the, my newest book, The Comedic Caressness Celebration. Today, I am here to talk about Merkaba, building the, the energy body of light and dimensional shifting. Ka'aba, the great pyramid is the tree of life, Merkaba. And naturally, I can only highlight this most profound science that our ancestors have given us. So I want to encourage all of you to uh, look online to some of the YouTubes that we have there that maybe can go in a little more depth today. As well as uh, we will have an online class starting in January and to look at the books that we have available here today. I want to start today's presentation with this image. Now, uh, I'm going to say this quote and to give proper attribution, it is by emilysquotes.com. It isn't about the quote, because many of us have said these words, but let me read them. You think of yourselves as humans searching for a spiritual awakening, when in fact you are spiritual beings attempting to cope with a human awakening. Seeing yourselves from the perspective of the spirit within, will help you to remember why you came here and what you came here to do. So many of us have said these words. Professor Small has said, we are gods having a human experience. The words are not new. But moreover, I wanted to bring your attention to the image. Because as we learn to indwell the macabre energy body of light, we are re atomizing ourselves, we are re-solarizing ourselves, we are re-stellarizing ourselves, we are becoming as starlight. We are in this process of comedic technology of making and remaking ourselves as beings of light. Now, the macabre, the comedic technology of remaking humans as beings of light, I'm going to highlight these areas. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a symbol of the Tree of Life. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a symbol of the Merkaba. We will highlight dimensional shifting from a linear tree of life and linear consciousness to indwell the Merkaba energy body of life, our spherical consciousness, our spherical body. We will see that we're not these linear beings. We are spherical and we are stellar to reveal the hidden Necheru in the Tree of Life who assists us in building the Lighted Temple and their tools for making and refashioning ourselves as beings of light. Highlighting completing our light energy circuitry in the secret embrace that is occurring in the union of Osir and Oset where within us. Highlight first eye activation and spherical consciousness our access to the pot Netaru, the divine qualities of the gods and their corresponding constellational and planetary energies. 
highlight the rise and the resurrection of her rule that is within. And if there is some time and technology serves to do a whirling uh, demonstration, uh, as, a, as a demonstration of, of indwelling the macabre energy body of life as we seek to become a ku ikur, which is excellent spirits. The macabre energy body of life is our vehicle of first eye, spherical consciousness, rebirth, transformation, resurrection, ascension, transport, empowerment, enlightenment, initiation, and service. Now, the Great Pyramid of Giza is a symbol of the Tree of Life. The Great Pyramid of Giza is a symbol of the Makaba. The Great Pyramid is called the Mur, or the Mur Akut in the Kemetic language of Metrinetia. It was built by Nesubiti King Khufu. And we will see that all of our template corresponds not only uh, celestially, but terrestrially, with the Nile, with the topography of Kemet. Uh, all of this is connected. The tree of life is our template, our cosmogram of our constitution, which is both human and divine. Wherein we are unfolding physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. So in this dimensional shifting from the linear tree of life and linear consciousness to indwell the Merkava energy, body of light, our spherical consciousness and spherical body, this brings us to my first book, Ka'aba, Building the Light of Temple. Now when I wrote this, put, published this book in 1999, uh, Spirit guided me to place this image on the front of the cover. And um, as much as, and then I would go on and write the book. So much was revealed to me at that time. However, much was unrevealed to me. For example, what was this structure of this symbol here? And what were these hidden natural here? Uh, but I would then dutifully go on and write this book, uh, both linearly and talking about this tree of life spherically. Uh, and the reader would learn all about Ka'aba, the basics, and then the more complex configurations. So these are the things we've been studying here and, and other conferences and classes and we teach. That Ka is spirit, Ka takes up the substance of itself uh, to see itself in form, Ba is soul, and Ab is conscience and grow in soul consciousness. So we would learn all about this. We would learn that Ka'aba corresponds with the divine trinity of Osir, Osir, and Haru, and the tree of life. We would see this basic configuration here that the tree of life is this divine cosmogram, our spiritual constitution, and here you see it laid out with the, these netteru not filled in. We would learn about the seven planes of consciousness, how to indwell, how to move through those states of consciousness, which psychology only stops right here in our development. And finally, we would um, get the big map dra dressed up. We would, we would learn um, about the, the, the spiritual anatomy, the chakras, the astrology, um, the netrology, the, um, the glands. We, we would learn uh, the, the um, states and stages of initiation. We would go through this whole process. Over years of study, it's, it's still unfolding. We would learn about the tree, the Tamaris tree, that surrounded the sarcophagus of, 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 of uh, Osir, uh, which, which we dispel as the Tamaris tree. And we would learn that uh, the, the Tamaris tree uh, corresponds with the Dejekulo. The Pertemru teaches us this. And so this uh, re revelation is, is what informed my writing of this book, The Kemetic Karasmus celebration. And I want to encourage you as you consider celebrating, uh, as, you, as you celebrate Kwanzaa, likewise, I encourage you to consider the celebration of a Kemetic Karasmus Christmas, Karasmus celebration uh, in this step-by-step -step guide at the Winter Solstice. But back to this symbol. So, since 1999, I have meditated endlessly on these symbols, on these works, kept writing, kept teaching, kept reading, kept
kept studying. And finally, it is in 2009 that Spirit um, revealed more of these symbols. And the, the Merkaba uh, is the technology of remaking humans as beings of light is further unfolded. Uh, such that I could write this book, Ka'aba, The Great Pyramid is the Tree of Life, or Kaaba. Now, the Great Pyramid is a tree of life. The tree of life is likewise a symbol of the Merkaba and the Great Pyramid. So how does the tree of life become this symbol? Well, so let's deal with this structurally and geometrically. Well, first of all, you see the tree of life laid out in a straight line. And what happens is there is a bending back of the tree of life upon itself. Like the newt uh, posture uh, and pose, like the Sekofa symbol, like the py double pyramid, the one above and the one below. So above, so below, so below is above. Like the serpent swallowing its tail. And here we see this configuration formed here with the pyramid at, at the top and the pyramid uh, below, as above, so below, so below is above, and the square in the middle. And it's in the square that we are fashioning the character, the, the, the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body. We are rounding the edges of our character. We are working on ourselves to become more, uh, first diamond-like, then more uh, spherical-like. Uh, and there I am in the gym. We do this advanced uh, yoga. Uh, there's symbolism all over in terms of our work. Now, first thing we want to do is talk about these hidden neturu. Now, the spirit revealed that these hidden neturu are nit and kemenu. And here they are pictured here. And so we see that the tree of life filled in here now in this book that has come out in 2009. And you see Nit and Kemenu filled here. Now, who are Nit and Kemenu? Well, both are male and female counterparts. Both are the oldest Kemetic Neturu dating back to pre-dynastic times. Both bear the symbol of the monk, the scepter, and the crowns. Both Nit and Kemenu are self-created, creating somethingness out of nothingness. They are at the beginningless beginning, both fashioning humankind. Nit works with the shuttle. Kemenu works with the potter's wheel. Nit, or Neith as she's also called, is considered a, the great mother and is synonymous with the nature or set, uh, heteru and nu. Her name means to knit or to weave, and she is associated with the power of protection the power to conceive and bring forth the new sun god daily. Kemenu, likewise, indicates a creative process and means to unite, join, and build. He made the first egg from which bring the sun, and he made the gods, and he fashioned the first man and woman upon the potter's wheel, and he continued to build up their bodies and maintain their life. He wears the white crown of the South, which is complementary to Nit's uh, red crown of the North. And like the Nesumiti uh, King Namur, uh, in uniting the land of Kemet, these combined crowns are the symbol of unification within us, a kingdom which is both human and divine. So we're going to see how we knit ourselves together. Now, Merkava, the commandant, technology of remaking human beings as light. The macabre natural tools of creation, the shuttle, the bowl, the arrows, the potter's wheel. The hidden natural spheres in the tree of life, building the light and temple and making and refashioning ourselves, body, mind, and soul. We cannot indwell the macabre energy, body, and light without the conscious invocation of Kemenu and Nit. More. Knit weaves the little light knits together. Uh, these are superatomic particles, like the tiniest of bubbles. So, so superatomic science is trying to figure out this substance that we're ultimately made of. Uh, this is similar to a child blowing long strings 
of bubbles. She is breathing forth strings of what I call in my book, bubbly light, that will become the filaments which her husband, Kim Anu, will use to fashion man and woman. They must be perfect before they can be received by her husband on his potter's wheel, who gives them the earthy dust element of densification. Here we have heaven and earth coming together. Consorts Nit and Kemenu are working together just as Newt and Geb. Nit provides the sheerest, most luminous garment of intification. Talk about having fine threads. You know, instead of a dense, coarse vehicle, how to have the finest threads. We think about wearing the finest robes, but, but what about the thread, very thread that we are made of? Knit provides the sheerest, most luminous garment of intification in the creation process. Her very name, Int, Knit, when you turn it around, means to, to int, to, to intify, to bring something into entity, to cre create something out of nothingness. Knit and Kimanu are intification and densification working hand in hand. Now, I want to call your attention briefly to this. Uh, this is what has been called uh, uh, by the more of a new age movement, the flower of life. But this symbol itself is located in Abtu, or what's also called Abydos, the temple of Osir. But you see here the superimposition of the tree of life on this symbol. Uh, and, I, and I say I'm only going to touch this briefly because we need to be, we need to continue in our research and we need to be ever mindful that other folks have our stuff and we just need to be vigilant about that. But anyway, um, here is the tree of life superimposed and here's the tree of life spirit has revealed to me. Now there's room for these missing spheres, but you see they've been left out. And like anything when we are trying to reclaim our wisdom, uh, uh, you know, ask, what is it, let me say, ab absence of evidence is an evidence of absence. Uh, if you can take uh, 10 of the laws and leave out the other, uh, this is, is a recurring theme in our reclamation process to put all the elements back together again and to be relentless in that, to be relentless uh, in, the, in the penetration of these symbols and the reconstruction. So we might ask the question, uh, what worlds built with and without Nit and Kim and You know, we've been invoking some of this energy, but what has it meant to be absent this energy? What, um, without the conscious inclusion of the Neturu, Nit, and Kim and in the Makaba tree of life, we cannot build the lighted, we cannot indwell this Makaba energy body of light. This energy body of light is, is, is a real entity. It, it, it's a, it, it is a real entity. Uh, and absent the precision of these natural, their adherence to the light and complementary would occur in Tehuti. Now, for those of you who study the tree of light, you know, you could, well, my book talks about how they are complementary with these other natural. Could this account for uh, why this world is built askew the divinely intended design? because we haven't been accessing these energies in this, maybe this more conscious way. Could this account for the grotesque creation of a separative materialistic world? Now I want to talk a, a sentence about the famine stella, the poverty, the drought. And uh, so this, the famine stella takes us this, to this conversation that is happening uh, with King Zosser uh, in, 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 with an intermediary with Kim and Newt. Uh, it's about the seven-year drought that has happened in Kimmet, and Zosser is complaining that the, 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 the Nile has only risen so many cubits, which has contributed to the famine. Uh, Kim Anu, in turn, um, complains that, well, his temple has been in ruin, there's been no tribute, there's been no offering, uh, and this, this uh, so uh, Zosser promises to rectify that situation in order for there to be increase, abundance, uja, all uja sinem, to have the Nile flow at its fullest so that there can be bounty and plenty and abundance. Kemenu, 
heaven knew is the bolts open up of the Nile. And the Nile, as above, so below, so below, as above, the Nile has its correspondence with the Milky Way galaxy. It is Kepanu and Nit uh, that are connecting us with this primordial substance, this primordial energy, uh, this stellar light. The, the, the brother who did the libation talked about water. It's water, the waters of space, where we're tapping into that, that uh, impregnable substance that we can impress uh, starlight uh, it, at its uh, most refined uh, uh, appearance. Now, uh, so the Murakama, the kinetic energy, the technology of remaking humans as beings of light. So we are working now on completing our light energy circuitry in the secret embrace and union of our serve and of our set. Now what is that? What is that? Well, we saw the bending back of the tree of life upon itself in this, in this, uh, in this symbol. And in that bending back, we now have the uniting of Osir and Oset. And this is taking place where? In, in the king's chamber. You see, as above, so below, so below, so above. As on heaven, and so on earth. So you see the king and queen's chamber, the king and queen's chamber. This is the uniting of those energies within ourselves. We talk about the rise of the kundalini, the fire, the shekham power, what, what uh, Europeans call kundalini. But the, the, the shekham power, how do we knit ourselves together uh, in, in this process? And with this uh, knitting ourselves together, we now see the rise and resurrection of her rule as we complete our circuitry. In that completing our circuitry, there's this electrification, this atomization, this stellarization back into starlight. So with this union, now we have Haru on the apex of the triangle at the sun coming over the horizon. This is the same electrical talk. We must be metaphysicians, metaphysicians. This is the same process of uniting the negative and the the receptive and the positive to create electricity. We are creating electricity right within our very beings. And so it is in this uh, crowning now, as Haru comes to the horizon, we are crowned with the red and white crown. Why? Because we have united the dualities within. We have united Ka and Ba, mother and father, Osir and Oset, the North Pole and the South Pole, the red and the white the positive and the receptive, the masculine and the feminine, in the constitution that is us, both human and divine. So this is what is our seating on the throne so that we may have that presence on earth. And we talk about when we, when we come in contact with advanced beings that they have this glow. Well, where's that glow coming from? That glow comes from the fact that they have knit themselves back together again. And in that electrification, we see this, this solarization and, and starlight. Then we have in this macabre comedic technology of making humans as beings of light access to the, the plot and to the rule, the divine qualities of the gods in their corresponding constellational and planetary energies. So here we are riding in and as the chariot of the gods, all of the nature that are within us, all of these qualities of divinity that are represented by each nature, Tehudi, Ma'at, uh, Heteru, are, have their correspondence with a planet, Mars, Jupiter, uh, Mercury, uh, and with a constellation, Aries, Leo, uh, Pisces, all of that is within us. This uh, presentation that reveals the Makaba, comedic technology, of remaking human beings as light, and first eye activation and spherical consciousness. So in this knitting ourselves back together again and coming into this spherical consciousness, spherical consciousness is the ability, and I have over the years come before you with my disco ball. I'm very fond of this because it, for me it's a symbol of the first eye. And I have talked on a number of occasions, and you can see this on YouTube, of how we, how we come to have this unitive, dual
in particular consciousness. Not just one type of consciousness, but all of these types. And there are the racial types I have on uh, YouTube. You'll, you'll see what that looks like. But it's the ability to see the part, this mirrored frame in relationship to this mirrored frame, and in, this, in relationship to this mirrored frame. And we're able to see, as we see the part in relationship to every other part, we are able in consciousness to know one at a timeness relationship and simultaneous all at once and that's the ability to see spherically not linearly spherically um, so I wanted to demonstrate this whirling uh, so how do we move beyond uh, here I am in that demonstration but I don't, we'll see what we can do with the technology with the technical thing but um, so as we move into this to indwell our macabre energy body of light. We are atomized into this, this solarization, into the stellar light, into the fiery mist, into this primordial energy. And this is more than just studies, reading the books. We need to do that, but over time we should see a demonstration in the life of an initiation walking on water, walking on fire, advanced yogic practices. And so what I teach in the academy is this whirling meditation. And in this whirling uh, meditation, there is no, where the whole body is filled with light. How can we whirl? And, and it is said even biblically, if the eye be single, what? The whole body is filled with light. So we're able to whirl because we, we can see in all directions. There, there's no dizziness or nausea because we're not in the bodies that get dizzy and nauseated. We have, we're in a trance and we've transcended those vehicles. We're able to see in all directions. There's a tremendous energy flow, a great feeling of peace and hotel. We're not in the mind that is thinking. We're in the mind of being and becoming. So here I am, and this is on YouTube. Uh, we'll see what we can do, but I direct you to the Macaba video on YouTube if don't get a chance. Um, the Merkaba is the comedic technology of remaking humans as beings of light. Now, this is key. Uh, the technology of dimensional shift. We have been in this material consciousness, and I've come before you many times and talked about how we're now in this shift of the, into a re-spiritualization of consciousness. But we are still in this tremendous grip of this material consciousness that dominates the planet. And in that material consciousness, we've been externalizing our capacities. We've been off into this thingness, into this gadgetry of, of every kind, uh, our cell phones, our, our computers. We've been externalizing our memory uh, and our capacities to the point where we, we don't even remember our mother's telephone and what do we do with these things? Well, we might, we, we throw them away, uh, or, or, or we might recycle them. But moreover, what's important for us to do is to see how we are atomizing ourselves. We want to learn how to recycle ourselves. We want to um, learn how to be atomized into the stellar, fiery substance, this primordial mist. Um, and, and, when, and when we when we pull back, when we when we we atomize, when we are drawn into this stellar substance, then we're able to see this seeming projection that you think is Dr. Terry sitting standing here, or that you think is you sitting there. But that's not who we are. That's what we're utilizing, just as, um, you know, we, 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 we use um, this equipment to play a disc, or we are this stellar light, and we, what we want to learn how to do in this recycling of ourselves is uh, be able to hold that projection, and then, um, through our invocation from the earth, like, like Kemenu gets the densification going, create 
and recreate ourselves moment to moment to moment. I, I want to create myself for this moment. And then the next thing I want to atomize, and I want to recreate myself the next moment. And then I want to reatomize, and I want to draw just what I need from the earthly plane so that I can interface with a more coarse physical plane uh, to bring through the starlight uh, in this moment. We have a new body every seven years. And just think uh, of the work of Nit and Kemenu. Uh, now, we, we create our thoughts. We know when we're getting ready to go off on a wrong thought. We can feel that little, little agitation, little percolation, and like someone might come in the room and we might look over there at him or her and we might start to have a, one of them wrong thoughts, right? And we can see that stop, that thought wobbling up or percolating up. And but this is where Nick comes in with her arrow to to destroy those thoughts even before they're constituted. So that every thought we have starts with this primal substance in its purest form, without dilution and pollution, but in its purest essence. We have that capacity. We have the capacity to remake our bodies. If we, if we have a, a, a stomach that has ulcers, we have the power to, to heal that body. Uh, and we have the power to heal our minds. Uh, and we have the power to heal our emotions. You know, our very thought, our very emotions can create a kind of, of, of toxicity, the feelings of bitterness or anger can create that toxicity in the, in the cell. So here we are, Merkaba and Orion's belt. So as above, so below, so below is above. Uh, so you see the correlation here now with Kaaba, the Merkaba body of light at the three pyramids of Giza. It is through the shafts that we are atomizing ourselves into the starlight. It is through the shafts. Our ancestors gave us the technology of remaking ourselves as being of light. And if we continue uh, in this technological process of externalizing our capacities, I mean, they're making cars now where you, don't even, you won't even drive them. We might as well be in a wheelchair. We might as well, we'll be a cell, and a, you know, and, and who's gonna own that technology? If we don't own it, <laughs> we're becoming less and less capable. We're becoming more and more out of work. We are beings of light. And so, what I say is, as we indwell the Makaba energy body of light, as we do the work to re-solarize and re-stellarize and we atomize ourselves into that primordial substance. May your way, may our way be stellar. Do our do our natural. Thank you, uh, hotel family. Uh, I'm going to do a spoken word piece um, with everyone's permission. Um, all right. So it's called uh, Keys to Build for an Eternity. A circle, a sphere, a cipher, a soul and a body for life and a life. My square was made from stardust, the darkest night until it rusts with oxygen into a copper complexion. From my inception, I've been a legend, looking up to heaven, walking on earth, sitting still for hours, contemplating my words. But what it's worth, I found power in the pyramids. I seen the same looking through the eyes of the little kids. I seen primal forces represented by panthers, ten tigers, wild, resurrected bones like necromancers. Calm down and find peace that's serene. Eyes open, but I feel like I'm living in a dream. It would seem sometimes I'm going out of my mind, out of my body, having OBEs, feeling crazy like ODB, meaning material, not purely physical or spiritual. I might have said ethereal. The whole universe was caused by just one miracle. How do you create something from no thing? How do you turn off the confusion that these thoughts bring? In our confused state of mind, we make moves without stopping to consider the consequences. Consequently, that just further the thirst for knowledge that needs quenching. So, we turn to these lessons from our brethren. 
or to a Bible for him, or to a Bible and a rapper, constantly worried about survival, or turning to a savior figure to handle our revival into a state of unity, or is the ego with pain in a state of ambiguity? Each initiation is a depth of illusion. In reality, you have to embody the changes that you are pursuing. Forms can be said to be similar if the angles and sides are congruent, so we build an alignment to structures larger than ourselves to avoid our own ruin. Or is it our salvation to watch the ego fall away for this curtain to fall on this grand play where every actor wears multiple masks, where we all want to be first, but who wants to be last? Pain by its nature is transient. It is meant to pass. Unfortunately, so are the good times. So what is meant to last? Keys to build for an eternity. A slight break from our yearning. Patience as the seed matures. With soil, air, water, and sun, it endures. So too will man thrive on this elevator ride to realization. I stay locked into this meditation, grateful to nature and ancestors for my situation. Thank you.
stand inside. We ascension into sacredness, all our gathering in. We ascension into sacredness from the 